Hello and welcome. Thank you for watching our quick learn about pesticides. I'm Karen DeAndre and I'm the Executive Director for Physicians for Social Responsibility Maine Chapter. I've been with PSR Maine for almost seven years now. PSR Maine was founded over 30 years ago. Today, with over 3,000 members statewide, we work on issues relating to toxic chemicals, climate change, nuclear weapons, and their threats to health. Some of what we'll talk about over the next five minutes or so includes some concerning information, but we hope that you'll leave here today feeling empowered about how you can protect yours and your family's health. More specifically, we'll discuss how pesticides get into our bodies and how we can avoid exposures. Also, if you have any questions, you can email them to us using the contact information on our website or also found at the end of these slides. Here's a brief outline of what we'll touch on during this quick learn. First, what are pesticides? What are they exactly? How do they interact in our bodies? What's the risk to us, to our families, to our children? Where are the places that they are found and how, more importantly, can we avoid being exposed to them? I think most of us know what pesticides are and we don't necessarily need a definition. What I was surprised to learn was that the term pesticide describes a broad range of chemicals such as weed killers, insecticides, and even commonly used hand sanitizers and disinfectants. They are all designed to kill plants, animals, and bacteria that are dangerous to health, but also used to keep lawns and turf looking nice. They can either be synthetic or organic and are a nine point six billion dollar industry. They are used all around us and often stored in our homes, under our sinks, and in our garages. They are used at playgrounds and even in school cafeterias, in restaurants to keep pests away, and on sidewalks to prevent weed and plant growth. They are found on our pets and on our food and even in our waterways to reduce things like invasive plants. Pesticides can enter our bodies in a few different ways, from food that was conventionally sprayed with pesticides and water that contains pesticide runoff from farms and lawns and turf. We can also breathe it in and it can be absorbed even through our skin. Most of us think of pesticide exposures as a classic case of poisoning. We are exposed, our skin turns red, it may burn, our eyes may burn and be red as well. Symptoms can be worse, like vomiting, and they can even lead to death. There has been a growing concern about the long-term effects of smaller dosages of pesticides. Newer studies are finding links to birth defects in field workers, for example. Some studies have even found a connection between golfers, the pesticides that are used on golf courses, and asthma. We won't go into depth with each of these types of pesticides, except only to really say that these are pretty common and their names may be very familiar. There are often questions about organic versus conventionally grown produce. This study from 2006 shows that children studied showed a decline in two pesticides when changed to an organic diet. Those levels increased after they returned to eating conventionally grown foods. What we'd like to note about this is that you should be eating organic when feasible, but don't stop eating fruits and veggies. There are a number of ways to reduce exposures. One we discussed in the previous slide, eating organically grown produce. The Environmental Working Group puts out this nifty little annual cheat sheet you can print out or use as an app on your phone when you go to the grocery store. Other organizations like PSR Maine and Beyond Pesticides work on education 
and with policymakers to change laws. NOFA, the Northeast Organic Farming Association, trains organic lawn care and turf specialists. Here in Maine, there are about 30 municipalities that have passed various pesticide bans. The most recent is Portland, where citizens work for over a year to ban pesticide use on both municipal and private property. There has been some great successes, but not without some very hard work. Industry, the governor, and ALEC, the American Legislative Exchange Council, has pushed several bills in Maine that would have rolled back these bans and prevented new ones. PSR Maine members worked hard with several other partners and citizens to stop these bills in committee and in the legislature. Here are some resources we talked about. You can find a downloadable version on our website. I want to thank you again. We welcome your feedback and questions. Please feel free to contact me at Karen at PSRMaine.org.